Hi everyone and welcome to our very exciting virtual University Roadshow 2020. This year's Roadshow is slightly different from the previous years where we were able to come into your school. But thank goodness for this great digital world in which we live in enables us to all stay connected virtually. The Virtual University Roadshow has been set up to help you connect with many different universities and colleges from outside Northern Ireland. As you can see, we have many exhibitors who have joined us from across the UK and beyond. You will get the opportunity through this bespoke platform to engage with all universities, find out about their courses, course content, entry requirements and much, much more. The ERNM team, along with the universities here today, are ready to help you make some of the most important decisions of your life. Firstly, and most importantly, I hope you're all settling back into school stroke college and coping with the new norm. In one way, it's great for you all to get back now and start planning for the next stage of a very exciting journey for you. This year, has been a bit of a roller coaster for everyone really, especially for you sixth form students who've just recently returned to school. The, this coronavirus has put us all in a unique situation which no one has planned for or experienced before. It has brought about big changes and uncertainties to all our lives across the globe. But as they say, the show must go on and we intend on keeping our students connected with universities and guide them in making the best choices suited to their future and therefore it isn't stopping our main event, the University Roadshow. So let's get started. So let me explain a little bit about the concept behind University Roadshow. So what we want to ask you is, could university outside Northern Ireland be right for me? You may ask, why? Well, we all love being at home and sometimes we need to get away and see what other exciting opportunities lie ahead for, for us. It is extremely exciting choosing which university to go to. You might even start to imagine yourself actually living there in a new town, city, or even a new country. Every student is unique and no one university experience fits all. We advise it and tailoring it to who you are and what will make you the happiest. It's really going to be three to four years of your life and it will be the best years ever. Trust me, I've been there and I'm speaking from experience. It's one of the most memorable periods of your life. We do have some fabulous home universities here in Northern Ireland, um, but the fact is there is a large percentage of students will, who will have to leave Northern Ireland to pursue their third level study. Some places have been cut, some courses no longer available. Entry requirements are increasing slightly and becoming extremely competitive. There is talk student fees may likely to increase. Those who move away from home, according to graduate employment research, are more self-sufficient and thus more employable. We do feel that leaving um, Northern Ireland, you do become more independent. Some students find it easier to settle in and develop their own social group if they have a complete fresh new start in a new place, establishing and making time for new friendships. Now we've covered the main concept of the University Roadshow, can it be right for you? Here are other areas that we're going to cover in the presentation, choosing the right degree, choosing the right university, how to apply to university, can you study abroad, and how to finance university. We at ERNM are here to answer all these questions alongside all of our university exhibitors who are present here today. Choosing the right degree. Is there a degree out there for me? Most definitely, yes, there is. I believe there's a degree out there for each and every one of you. You just need to find yours. So how will you find yours? It is all about research, research, research. And things you should be thinking about when doing this research is 
Would you find the course interesting? What are the entry requirements? What is involved in the course, looking at the course content? What are the job prospects? Does it lead me straight into a job or does it require me doing more further study and perhaps specialising? And finally, how competitive is it? How many places are on offer? Are there a lot of students from Northern Ireland going into this particular degree? These are all questions for you to think about. So let's play a little game, real or no real, like on Radio 1. Here's a selection of degrees in the UK, only some are real. So have a little think about what you think is an actual real degree. And I'm going to give you a few minutes. OK, here you go. On this slide, you will see what is actually real. So. As you can see, Pythagoras theorem studies and basketball coaching and performance are not real. But surf science, feel the force, how to train to in the Jeddah way, and ethical hacking are real. So this is just a little exercise to show you there is so many degrees out there. It's when you start your research, you will discover all of this. Would anyone like to guess also what is the most popular degrees in to study in the UK? Have a little think. As you can see on this slide here, there are the top 10 most popular degrees in the UK. So you can see we have got the likes of um, business, social studies, engineering, law, education. So the world is really your oyster. Your degree is the next big stepping stone to bigger and better things. Also remember, this year with the whole academic things could change the future of your work. So bear that in mind when choosing your degree. Where will the opportunities be? Where will skills be acquired? How do you prepare for the new areas that may be on demand? Areas like health, areas like science, research, areas in the education, the technology sector. These are all to be considered, especially under the current circumstances. Another fun fact for you all today are these supplies and celebrity degrees. Who would have thought that Courtney Kardashian had a degree in theatre arts or comedian Harry Hill with neurosurgery, Ger Butler, law, it's amazing and this shows you that it really is what you do with your degree um, that leads you into your particular career path, showing that you have transferable skills. So moving on, choosing the right university, this again is entirely up to you, but the best way to look at choosing the right for university does again involve a lot of research. It doesn't have to be boring. There are so many ways in doing this. By going online, now you can view all information on universities, social media pages and websites. You can go online and do virtual tours, which are a great way of imagining yourself being there. And that's what the universities are here today for. They will explain all about the university. They will be able to tell you about their courses, about any virtual open days that they have coming up. The main areas we think you should cover when researching your university are things like location. Is it accessible for me as a student from Northern Ireland? Is it easy to get to in terms of flights? What reputation has a university, facilities the university has to offer, especially if I am a student who is really into sports, maybe particularly swimming, do they, do they have those facilities to offer? Student support, especially as a first year student, what do they offer? Type and size of university can be really important. Some may like the small universities, around 5,000 students, others may like to broaden their horizons and, and go into a huge university with maybe 30,000 plus students. Again, accommodation should be something to consider, but does this university as a first year student offer me guaranteed on campus accommodation? At ERM, we recommend you choose the course and university together. 
So now let's look at applying to university. We are now going to cover applying to university. The application is through UCAS. So now that you've chosen a route to higher education, your first stop is UCAS, University and Colleges Admission Service for the UK. UCAS is what you have to apply through to go to university in the UK. Applications can be submitted on the 8th of September and it costs £26, which is usually paid to your school and they pay it to UCAS on your behalf. You have five choices that you do not have to put down in order of preference. An application will go to all of your five choices. So it's now open so you can go on and start having a feel for the system and navigate around to see what it's like. The first deadline to take note of is the 15th of October and this is for anyone applying to Oxford, Cambridge or for medicine, dentistry and veterinary. Most of you will have the 15th of January deadline, closing date for the majority of courses. Although we really strongly advise you here at ERNM to stick to your school deadline, which can sometimes be Halloween, for example, try to aim to have your application in no later than Christmas. So there's no last minute stress, you're all organized. You need to get a reference from your teachers so you don't want to be knocking at their door at the last minute. Remember, you must keep on their good side to get the glowing reference. So always give yourself as much time as possible. If you log on to UCAS.com, they will have this all covered in videos talking you through the whole process and lots of advice and tips when filling in your application. It's extremely um, user friendly system. It's easy to navigate around so you should have no problems here. Just familiarize yourself with it all. A very important part of your application is your personal statement and I look at it as your golden ticket to university. It's basically a short essay about yourself. It's about selling yourself, an opportunity for you to showcase your skills and abilities. It is 47 lines, 4,000 characters. You need to stand out. These admissions tutors will be reading thousands of these personal statements. So they've got to, you've got to say why they should pick you. Tell them why. It is what the university will read when they don't know you and you are just a number for them to decide whether they are going to give you that vital place at university. We work with a lot of universities and they have told us exactly what they want to read. So we at ERM have produced a little framework that can help you get started on your personal statement. We have placed this on our education, recruitment and marketing stand and also on the homepage here in which you can download and print off. It's important to note that you only get to write one personal statement for all of your course choices. It is a key part of your UCAS application. Again, showcase your personality, ambitions, skills, experience, achievements, and future ambitions. So now I'm going to take you through what you should include in your personal statement. So things like writing about the course, the course that you're applying for, making sure that you know what content is going to be covered telling us about your skills and achievements and those that relate to your particular area or course that you're going to be pursuing. Tell us about your hobbies and interests, particularly transferable skills that again are relevant to your particular course or career area. Work experience. Tell us about unpaid or paid work experience. Perhaps this work experience has helped reassure you that this is a particular career you want to go into. And finally, tell us about your future plans as well. Do you intend to go straight into employment or do you want to further your education in terms of going on to progress into onto a master's postgrad?
There are some great websites out there that can offer some advice and obviously UCAS.com is one of them. But another one to look at is thestudentroom.co.uk. These are excellent for you to view some examples. Just be aware of copying. Um, UCAS screens all applications for false, missing or misleading information and checks for all patterns of similarity and will report this to universities and your application could be rejected. It is important that this is your own personal statement, so hence your own words, your own content. You may have an interview depending on what course you are applying for. So we advise doing some preparation for this. Courses that may require an interview are those like medicine, dentistry, nursing, teaching, music, art. And it is important that you do prepare for these interviews. And these are some typical interview questions, things like tell me about yourself. Why do you want to study this degree? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Why should we offer you a place on this course at this university? And here is a little summary of what you need to do for your interview. Preparation is a key. Show great enthusiasm. Smile, eye contact, have questions to ask at the end, but most importantly, be yourself in this interview. So after you have submitted your application and perhaps gone through interview, you will receive one of three choices. You will definitely hear back from the university either way, so don't panic. You will either receive a conditional unconditional or unsuccessful. Then you narrow your choices to firm, which is your first choice, and your insurance, which is your backup option. All other offers must be declined at this point. And when they're gone, remember they're gone. So now let's look at applying to the Republic of Ireland. This happens through the CAO system, or the Central Application Office. For students from Northern Ireland applying, it's very easy to complete the online application. There are so many differences between the CAO and UCAS, and it does work in your favour. There is no personal statement. You can change your mind and make changes to your choices for free between May and July. Not like the UCAS, once you had said that's it. There are different types of degree available. There is a level eight degree, which is equivalent to your honours degree here in Northern Ireland. And then you also have a level seven, which is an ordinary degree, which you can pursue, but you will have to do a one year top up to get it equivalent to an honours degree that you would receive here. CAO also require you to send them examination certificates 10 to 14 days after your results. You have 10 choices in your preferred order of preference. So it's different to the UCAS. You do have to put them down in order. One being the one you want most. So now you will look at applying to the Republic of Ireland, which happens through the website www.cao.ie. The CAO application, Central Application Office System, is really easy to complete. There are really five differences between the CAO and the UCAS application. Number one, there is no personal statement. Also, you can change your mind and make changes to your choices for free between May and July. Please note that there are also different degrees levels offered in the Republic of Ireland. There are level eight, which is an honours degree, and that's the equivalent of a degree here in Northern Ireland or the UK, anywhere in the UK. 
There is a level 7 degree, which is referred to as an ordinary degree. You will have to do another year on top of that three-year ordinary degree to bring you up to the honours level. CAO also require you to send any examination certificates 10 to 14 days after your application has been submitted. Need, you need to send originals for GCSE results. Also on the CAO application, you have 10 choices level 8, 10 choices level 7. A majority of our students from Northern Ireland will fill out the 10 choices for the level 8 degrees. You do have to put these down in order of preference, one being the one you want most. So the CAO application facility opens usually around the 5th of November. How much? Basically, you can see here from the table um, the costs that are involved. 30 euros is the discounted rate if you apply before the 20th of January. And obviously, it increases the longer you leave it. The earlier you apply, the cheaper it is. Studying abroad is our next stop on the roadshow. So why would you want to study in Europe, for example? There are lots of reasons as to why you should consider studying here. It's a chance to experience a different culture and learn new languages. You have a lot more freedom and independence. You have lots of opportunities regarding work and travel. There is over 1,300 EU institutions who offer high quality courses through the medium of English. So languages and the limit of languages does not limit you pursuing a degree here. Employers do love it. Um, statistics show you're 60% more employable if you've studied abroad, abroad. It's free or low cost tuition fees. Studying in Europe, but when you're looking at um, this option, I would direct you towards a fantastic website, which is um, studyinereurope.eu. It has a lot of fantastic, valuable information. There are many destinations that our Northern Ireland students look at. Um, I've just picked out one here, which tends to be most popular, and that is Holland, really the Netherlands. Um, when you're looking at the Netherlands, you apply directly through studylink.nl. Deadlines may vary between May and July. Um, fees currently for EU students is around um, €2,168 per year. Now, obviously, there are going to be a lot of questions when um, we eventually um, leave the EU come December. And I have been speaking to a number of Dutch universities who do inform me that this may change for Northern Ireland students, where they do have to look at paying between eight to ten thousand euros um, as non-EU fees. They are looking at other options if a student from Northern Ireland does hold a passport, an Irish passport. Um, this may be a way of um, looking at reduced fees. Um, but we will at ERNM will keep you updated with this as things with Brexit do tend to change. Um, also at the moment there are loans and grants available but there are a lot of um, restrictions and regulations. You have to actually be working part-time in the country in order to avail of these. I'm just going to briefly reiterate about studying in Europe post Brexit. Um, as you can imagine, it is quite confusing on what exactly is going to happen. Um, the long term consequences of this are virtually unknown, as this is completely uncharted territory. But we at ERNM will keep you updated as much as possible as we can. If any changes come through, we will inform you right away. Please follow us on our social media platforms. It's usually the first place that we post any announcements like this.
we do know that university is an expense and we're going to walk you through what you need to know about how to finance going to university. So firstly, how much does it actually cost? As you can see here, these are the fees that are in place currently per year for you. In England and Scotland, it will obviously cost 9,250 per year, Wales 9,000 for the year and Republic of Ireland 3,000 euros. As you will see, the student loan is available to you as a student. Student finance will cover your fees completely and this will be paid directly to the university. In this table, you may see the words loan and grant. When it says loan, this means obviously you will have to pay it back. Grant, this is money you do not have to pay back and is useful for paying things like accommodation or other living costs. The amount that you receive of a grant really depends on your household income. You can get up to 3,475 through the maintenance grant if your household income is 19,203 or less. There is other funding which will depend on your own personal circumstances, such as London, they might have slightly more funding available, the course perhaps lasting longer, household income, disabilities, any dependents. You apply through the Student Finance NI website or via the paper. If you are unsure how to answer a question, look at the notes or lift the phone and contact Finance NI. Apply early to receive your funding. If you apply late, you may not receive your funding when your course starts, which may affect your cash flow and always keep a copy of correspondence. Your student fee loan will be the best loan that you'll ever be offered in your life and we do encourage you to take this. Now let's zoom in on the student loan because it can be a worrying factor for not only students but parents too. So let's look at what do you actually repay and these are facts about your student loans and repayments. The earliest you'll start repaying your student loan is April after you graduate. You only need to make payments once you earn more than £18,935 per year. This means the more you earn, the larger your payments will be. If you're employed, your employer will take the student loan repayment straight out of your wage, so it's, it's a lot like paying taxes, I suppose. If you haven't paid back your debt after 25 years, Student Finance NI will write off your outstanding debt. In terms of repaying these loans, it is all in relation to what you earn after graduation. So I think we all agree it's very affordable and manageable. Student Finance is nothing to worry about. There's a fantastic website called themartinlewis.com that really explains and breaks down how the student loan works and how we understand it. And we believe that 83% actually never do pay off their loan. So some more funding that may be available for you, especially those who are going into or starting a career as a nurse, doctor or allied health professional. You can receive up to £5,000 of a non-refundable payment and you'll need to apply for this each year. The funding applies to students who are particularly going into areas, for example, in dental hygiene, dietetics, occupational therapy, nursing, operating department practitioner, um, paramedics, physiotherapy, speech and language, radiotherapy. Um, there is a full list of these um, areas on www.thecompleteuniversityguide.co.uk student advice forward slash NHS bursary. Um, the completeuniversityguide.co.uk has some very, very useful information, particularly within this NHS bursary. On top of that 5,000, you could also receive an extra 3,000, particularly in trusts, 
that are struggling to recruit uh, for their particular um, hospital. On top of that, there is a further £1,000 that can be rewarded per year to help in shortage areas such as mental health, nursing, um, learning disability, podiatry, radiography, for example. Please also remember and look at scholarships and bursaries which are offered by a majority of universities and may be something you should ask our universities today. There are deadlines for these bursaries and some can be as early as October. Remember that you apply directly to the university. Universities, I believe, invest millions in scholarships and many of them go unclaimed every year. So it's definitely worth asking about and applying. So you will be pleased to know that that is the end of our Roadshow presentation. We hope you gained an insight into the overall process of applying to university in the UK and beyond. We at ERNM are here to help in any way, so just pop us through either an email or chat to us on our stand today. Um, we will be happy and to help with any of your questions or queries that you may have. Have a browse around your platform and have a chat with our lovely exhibitors who are also willing to help and offer any information on their exciting courses and what their university has to offer. They have a wealth of knowledge and are keen to speak with you all. Thanks again from all of the team here at the University Roadshow. We hope you enjoy your day with us. Best of luck. It's an amazing journey and you will never look back.